To receive coaching on how to create and grow a YouTube channel, invest in real estate, or achieve financial freedom, visit cashnow.video. Hey, what's up guys, John here. Some really big changes are coming to the real estate market. Thanks to Jeff Bezos, a lot of private equity funds and ventures and a lot of hedge funds, a lot of people are uh, looking at real estate as a unique play on society, on, on the way in which land rules our lives. I think it's gonna be very interesting to watch how this kind of unfolds and I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step exactly what this is going to look like, as well as what you can do to protect and provide for yourself and your family by smart and savvy investing and well-trained financial planning. When I say well-trained, I mean really paying attention to your net monthly income coming in, as well as your expenses and what you can do to offset any of this liability so that you can use a really diligent strategy to ensure that in the next couple of years, you position yourself accordingly to where this takeover does not impact you or your family. So take a look at this. Jeff Bezos backed real estate investment platform acquires another $23 million worth of single family rental homes. Now this platform, I must say, is sheer genius. The way in which it's established, it's set up. I personally can see this platform being one of the biggest landlords in America without doubt. I'm gonna share with you exactly why I think this is so genius for them. Jeff Bezos backed rental platform investment platform crashes after investors flood the site in the newest batch of offerings, right? Jeff Bezos real estate investment platform fully funds six properties in six in 12 hours, right? 12 hours. Here is this platform. So this is uh, arrived homes, right? So you look arrived homes and look at some of the homes, all the ones in red obviously are sold out. These are just some of the ones that they essentially purchase and then they make it available for everyday investors to go invest in them. But as you can see, they are starting to really make headway. It's, it's a, new, a new company. They sold 130 houses, right? They, this is essentially how it works. They buy the property in cash and then they essentially take this property and make it public as a company would if it were to go on the stock exchange. They sell shares in, the com in this company, AKA the house. And they sell the shares for you know about a hundred bucks a share. And so they may have 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 investors that put up a hundred bucks. You know, some obviously invest more. And then how this works is that the arrived homes company, they'll make their fees with an agent rebate. So we collect real estate agent rebate from the original property seller when we first buy the property, right? So they get a, a nice chunk up front, then they get a service fee. This is a fee arranged charges for our work involved in sourcing the property and preparing it for investment. This, this fee includes any cost to a ride for financing or holding the property while we prepare it for investment. There's a one-time fee, and then an annual asset management fee. Annual asset management fee is an annual fee based on the capital contributions of investors. This fee is paid out of the income from the property each year. This fee helps cover the cost of managing ongoing property administrations and the asset under management fee for each property is listed on the offerings detail, right? So it's very, very smart. And what they're essentially doing is they're going to be able to incorporate all these acquisitions into like an Amazon Prime uh, model to where you, know, you rent your house from Amazon and then Amazon will deliver your food and your toilet paper and uh, socks and shoes and uh, books and everything else that you would buy from Amazon. And uh, you know, basically they're, uh, they're establishing Amazon as basically the go-to for your everyday life. And I believe that what is essentially gonna happen here with this arrived homes is they're looking at inflation. Everyone's looking at inflation and paying attention to it. Like, wow, inflation, you know, they say is 8.6, but many would argue it's 18.6. What are we gonna do with this money? It's just sitting in the bank collecting 0.02% interest. We need to invest it, right? And so what does Amazon do? Amazon sitting on billions and billions of dollars. They go out there, they buy these properties, then they buy them, they get a markup on the purchase, then a management fee, right? Then they essentially get all the money from the general public to then go buy the general public's property, right? And so the more money they get from the general public, the more properties that they're gonna buy from the general public and the more um, impoverished the general public will be, right? This is, what, um, this is what Amazon is doing. I believe it's gonna be wildly successful. I mean, anything that has that type of funding, that type of attention, and that type of customer base behind it is obviously gonna have a hard time failing, right? So you look at what they're doing, but then Steven Schwarzman, the founder of uh, Blackstone, they have about 900, almost, almost a trillion dollars 
in assets under management, like 918 billion or something like that. Assets under management, significant, right? A large percentage of this is holdings in real estate, right? They're, they're very, very, they're, their footing, their positioning in real estate is very strong. In 2009, they founded Invitation Homes, one of the largest landlords in America. At that time, it was the largest landlord in America. It's still probably top two, top three. So private equity bonanza moves down market amid bear market jitters. This is very smart as well, because what, what Blackstone is doing is very similar to what Amazon is doing. It's slightly different, but it's they're, they're focusing on the general public, they're raising capital from the general public and then reallocating that capital to buy the general public's properties, right? And so how it works is after years of private, e private equity firm aggressively marketing themselves to high net worth investors and their financial advisors, the message seems to be breaking through. Facing a bear market and bleak economic outlook marked by inflation, supply chain imbalances and hawkish Federal Reserve, more RIAs and high net worth investors are warming up to alternative investment funds such as private equity, hedge funds, venture capital, private, private debt strategies, and their search for yield, according to advisors and investment managers spoke with Forbes. I think retail appetite is increasing, said Donald Cagini, chief investment officer of Mercer Advisors, which oversees roughly $42 billion in of clients' assets. This is a sense amongst investors broadly that there is gains and opportunities in private equity and private credit that until recently have not been available. Their growth and demand is especially coming down market, right? Referring to individuals with net worths, you know, a million to five million bucks. This trend is 100% towards increasing retail allocation into alternative funds, says Ken Brodquitz, Chief Investment Officer at Greece Financial Partners, the Cleveland-based advisory group that oversees about 1.5 billion in assets for high net worth individuals. If you can get 10% plus returns in alternative investments, where can you control the outcome to a much greater degree? Clients are extremely interested in that. Now, how they're gonna be able to do this in you know, receiving superior returns over everyone else is because you know, a, very, a very, very good saying is, it's, it's always been people would think, oh, it's, you know, it's always who you know is you know, who you are. But the reality is, it's who knows you is where the power comes. Who knows you? And everyone knows Blackstone. Everyone knows Arrived Homes. When they go into a financial you know, investment or a financial decision, they're going in with information that is far above and beyond anything that we have. And so they're going in, they're placing their bets in the right markets. They know, you know in markets that are you know, likely gonna have a higher probability of getting you know, insurance denied, property insurance, like they're talking about in South Florida, um, and Louisiana and other markets where insurance is gonna be challenging, they're gonna know where those markets are gonna be, the, the problematic markets. They're gonna know uh, how to finance these deals and, and where they can get the best debt. They're gonna get debt, you know, one, two, three percent interest. They're not gonna spend six and a half percent like the everyday investor, right? So they're gonna know where to invest, how to invest, what type of debt to put on the property, uh, what potential problems could be coming down the road. All these things are gonna be factoring in, giving them all a competitive advantage to issue superior returns to their investors far and above anything else that the everyday mom and pop retail shop could uh, anticipate to you know, afford to their, their customers. So they go on to say that alternative investments firms traditionally have relied on institutions like endowments, public pension systems, as well as the ultra rich to fund their investments. However, per the Security and Exchange Commission accredited investors threshold, anyone with a net worth of a million dollars in investable assets or $200,000 in annual income or needs to meet certain investment industry qualifications, a provision added in 2020 can legally invest in private market funds that leaves a big untapped market for fund managers. According to a survey conducted last month at the 2022 Morningstar Conference, 84% of about 300 investment professionals and financial advisors said they now recommend qualified clients put some money into alternative funds. The survey conducted by private funds platform CAIS also found that a third of advisors believe the traditional portfolio of stocks and bonds is no longer effective. Over two-fifths said the same about the traditional 60-40 allocation between stocks and bonds. Those concerns reflect widespread investor anxiety following a historically great run for stocks between 2010 and 2021. The S&P returned almost 15%, right, including reinvestment of dividends. I think what we will start to see now that we are going to see a downturn in the market is people looking for historical private market returns relative to public markets, right? This is exactly where these funds are gonna really start to shine. People are gonna to start to get very bearish on stocks, on growth stocks, 
on crypto, on, uh, on anything that they view as high risk. Sure, they're, they're still gonna invest, but I don't think they're gonna invest as ambitiously. They may allocate 10% of their portfolio or 5% of their portfolio, but if you're gonna invest and, and you wanna invest with a company like Blackstone, one of these private equity firms, the odds of them going out of business is very, very little in relation to you know, a random uh, growth stock or a random crypto or a random uh, other alternative investment, simply because of the, the economies of scale and the power and strength that a company like this has, right? Stephen Berman, head of private wealth solution at Hamilton Lane, who says that private equity and private credit have outperformed the public markets in the last 19, in at least 19 of the last 20 years. Private equity historical performance is a hotly contested topic. Industry critics said that the fund managers overstate their investment performance by relying on a metrics called the IRR, which often does not reflect the fund's true rate of return for investors. Even if the stock market is in free fall and interest rates are rising, private equity funds continue to pursue new investors, peddling the myth that private equity returns defy the laws of financial gravity and yield strong returns even in periods of economic turbulence and declining values of publicly traded companies. Some brokers at Merrill Lynch, you know, and they go on to say that that you know some brokers Merrill Lynch and other brokerages around the country feel as though they are not being fully transparent with the rate of return in which investors are seeking or and what they're promised. Right? This doesn't include for the fees, the traditional you know the traditional fees that a private equity company would take generally, which is a two percent asset management, about twenty percent on the uh, return, right? So they get these strong, strong fees on the performance of these funds. What's gonna happen here as we step into an affordability crisis is we are going to see a couple of unique things happen. The first thing we're gonna see is gas prices likely continuing to rise, the cost of living continuing to rise, and people sitting on a lot of cash that are paranoid, right? They're paranoid about what the future is gonna look like. So they're gonna to wanna to invest it with a strong company and they're gonna to wanna to come down it to brass tacks and get to a place in which you know, they are taking some risk off the table. I see these large companies over the next two to five years really dominating, like beyond anyone's wild imaginations, really dominating the real estate market. I think right now we all have to pay attention to this and make smart and savvy investments and make sure that you own the home, you own your property where you're living, ideally. You have a fixed mortgage. If you need a mortgage, it's fixed. It's not an adjustable rate mortgage. And you have a strong plan for the future, right? Because I believe things are only gonna get harder, but the smart and savvy investors are aware of this. What do you think about everything? Drop your comments below, subscribe here, and subscribe to my second channel. It's gonna be an interactive call-in show and a podcast this upcoming week. It's pinned to the top comment below this video, so be sure to go over there and subscribe. And uh, go follow me on Instagram, up in the banner. and. Uh, if you need help with your credit, maybe your credit score is holding you back from buying your first property, cashnow.video, cashnow.video. If you want to get started on YouTube, get on the YouTube grind with me, cashnow.video. And if you want to invest in real estate, the market crashes, cashnow.video. There's two options, one with credit repair, one without credit repair. And uh, I'll see you guys inside.